Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Alina and in today's video, I'm talking about tips for a no or low spend year in 2024. Full disclosure, this is my first time trying this or talking about it, so I'm no financial expert. I just watched a bunch of YouTubers talk about it and compiled everything I learned into this comprehensive video for you. I know this video is being published a few days after the new year, but that doesn't mean that you can't start your journey whenever you think that's best for you. So whether you're watching this video in June or December, I hope that these tips are inspirational and helpful. Let's get started. Number one, determine your why. Ask yourself why you want to challenge yourself to a no or low spend week, month, or year? Do you want less clutter in your life? Be a more conscious consumer who spends less on impulse purchases. Do you want to prioritize paying off your debt or saving up for things that really matter to you, like more experiences, a holiday, a home, or a new car? You could even challenge yourself to be more mindful about how you spend your money. Determine your personal why. It will serve as a reminder for you throughout the year and allow you to reflect on how you want to live your life. Number two, create a plan and rules for yourself. Your goals and challenges are going to be different from the next person. Try not to alter your rules once you've set them. And even though this video is titled tips for a no or low spend year, you could even try doing a week or a month if that suits your lifestyle better. Number three, consider fluctuations. Your spend may vary month to month, so you should consider that when planning your goals. Maybe your insurance is due or you have a wedding in July, making your outgoings much higher that month. Maybe you could spend even less on a month where you don't have any events or prior financial commitments to account for periods where you have to spend even more than usual. Doing this also reminds you not to be disheartened when you compare your finances month to month. You'll know exactly why you had to spend more in that particular period. Number four, make a list of things you are allowed to buy and not allowed to buy. This will help you keep track of your goals and buy things that will benefit your life. If you notice a trend of regretful purchases, note it down and put it on your no buy list. For me, it is impulse buys, one time outfits for events and new makeup. If you know you need a new desk for your home office this year or want to prioritize traveling, put those on your do spend list. It'll make you feel more accomplished knowing that your money is going to where you planned it to be and things that will benefit your life instead of things that didn't in the first place. Number five, declutter and take stock of what you already own. Check your wardrobe, your bathroom and your kitchen for things that you already have. You can get creative with your existing items or rediscover things that you've forgotten about. Try styling your clothes in a new way. Try using up all the makeup the hair care and the skin care that you've bulked by once. Or you could create a new recipe to use up all the pantry items that are expiring soon. Taking stock of what you already own may make you realize that you have enough or more than what you need right now. Number six, unsubscribe to buy messages. This is a bit hard and contradictory for me to say as I work in marketing, but a good way to spend less is to unsubscribe to these messages. So that means unsubscribing to your email newsletters and following brands and influencers on social media that you know will affect your spending habits on things that you don't want to spend on. If you have a shopping app on your phone, delete it. My guilty pleasure is Depop, which I have deleted. So if I do want to shop on it, I'll have to jump on my laptop to do so um, rather than having it accessible at my fingertips on my phone. If you need to take extreme measures, you can block websites or avoid visiting them in store. Glaçons and Kmart are my problem stores. So I will try not to be shopping at those stores this year. Number seven, create barriers to buy. In the previous point, I talked about stopping prompts to buy, but if you're ready to buy something, think again. You could delete your credit card information on browsers and on websites, which will make it harder for you to purchase items on a whim. If you really want something, you'll have to get up and go find your card. Some of my friends don't even buy online at all with the mindset that if they wanted something, they would go in store and get it. And if they're too lazy to do that, then it wasn't worth buying in the first place. One thing that I'm going to try to do this year is shop in person with somebody else 
buy the thing I want online and then click and collect it. I know it sounds like a lot of hoops to jump through, but by doing this, I'm not allowing myself to purchase erratically or when there's a flashy sale. It will also force me to do something I hate, which is shopping with another person. Number eight, track your budget. If you aren't already doing this, it's time to start. There are a lot of resources and templates online, so I'll let the experts dive into that. But you can do this via your bank app, on an Excel or Google Sheet, or in a little notebook if that is how you work. Tracking your finances is the only way you'll know if you're accomplishing your goals and see how much you're saving by doing this no or low spend challenge. Number nine, look for free alternatives. If you're doing a no spend year, it might seem like you can't do anything at all, but that's not the case. There are plenty of ways to have fun or get what you need. You can check garage sales or Facebook marketplace for free items that you might need. If you're into books, check out your local library or hunt for street libraries you can take or exchange books at. When the weather's good, take advantage of nature's parks and beaches and find free events and shows in your city for entertainment. At home, you can play board games, watch a movie on TV, try a new recipe or or get creative with a DIY project. Number 10, borrow, rent or fix before you buy. It can be so tempting to buy something new when you don't have it, but this flowchart is really amazing for considering if you really need something or not. For example, my sit and stand desk is not working right now and I'm very tempted to just get a new one so I don't have to worry about fixing it. But the reality is I probably only have to screw something a bit tighter and that's $500 saved. So in the name of spending less this year, I will try to fix it. Occasion dresses are something that I probably don't need any more of. I have amazing friends that I can borrow dresses from if I'm not feeling the formal ones that I have currently. Or I could rent one from a dress rental business, which are becoming more popular nowadays. Number 11, write a grocery list. Plan what you need to buy in advance. This is something my family is guilty of not doing, which results in a fridge of random groceries um, that just end up being unused. If you meal prep, you're probably familiar with buying exactly what you need for your meal. But if you don't do this already, I think it's a great habit to pick up, which will also help prevent food waste. When I say write a grocery list, I don't only mean for groceries. Say you're visiting the shops planning to buy one shirt. You should only leave with that one shirt and nothing else. Try not to cave in to a buy to get one free sale or something flashy that catches your eye while you're there. I'm personally challenging myself to only buy three items per month, which means I have to be very conscious about what I pick up. So I'm planning my purchases monthly to make sure that I'm getting the things that I want and need and basically not allowing myself any impulse purchases. Number 12, do not bulk buy in advance. If you're just starting your no or low spend journey, I encourage you not to buy items in bulk in advance before you start. Consider your goals and rules. And if whatever you're doing now is breaking them before you start the challenge, it's not gonna set the right momentum you want. Number 13, tell people who can hold you accountable. Telling people who care and support you about your goals is a great way to stay accountable and keep you motivated. They'll also have an insight into your financial objectives and will understand if you don't want to go out for drinks one night or if you prefer to host a catch up at home instead of going to a shopping spree sale event with them. Number 14, follow people who have the same goals as you. If you don't have people who can be your cheerleaders in real life, it can be really helpful to have those online that can be or are going through the same challenges as you. There are community forums, Discord channels and influencers that talk about financial goals that you can follow or join. I find it really helpful to watch a motivational video when I'm in a slump and that usually inspires me enough to keep going. I'll add some of my favorite YouTubers who talk about the no or low spend challenge below. And finally, number 15, don't give up. 
prioritize being better over being perfect. You're going to have some setbacks or moments where you accidentally or purposely break your own rules. Refer back to your reason for doing this challenge and remind yourself what you really want from this life. It is definitely not the end if you falter throughout your journey. Pick yourself back up and the you at the finish line will thank you for it. So cheesy. And those are the 15 tips that you can apply for a no or low spend year. I'll be creating another video on my personal reasons and rules for a low spend year and another one on things that I will not buy this year. So if you're interested in those, please consider subscribing to stay connected. I would love to know your reasons for starting this challenge. So let me know in the comments and let's support each other. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! I met you